Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and we are in the garage because it is a beautiful day outside. So beautiful in fact that I had to wait probably a good hour for people to stop mowing their lawn, blowing their leaves, trimming their hedges. So. I'm getting a little later start on this than I wanted to. However, it's one of those ones where I don't think it's gonna take long at all. I know, I've said that before, and then, hello day two. What are we making today? I just have to tell you, I have some pretty great friends, and those friends know that I like to DIY the shit out of things. They also know that I like turning one thing into a completely another thing. This is one of those examples. My friends, neighbor Dave and Dorothy, side note, Dave is not my neighbor at all. They brought me over these grape trays. Some of you may not know what this is. You know, Central Valley life, everybody knows what these are. If you were a farmer, you would pick your grapes and you would put the grapes on these trays. And this is where the grapes would sit so that they could dry out and turn into raisins. Neighbor Dave has a lot of these. I think they probably are vintage because times they are a changing. And I feel like nowadays they probably just lay them like on a sheet on the dirt. I don't really know. But grape trays, people love them. And guess what? He gave me two. Uh-huh. So I have a plan for this one, which we're going to do today. And I have a plan for this one, which we're gonna do, I'm gonna say tomorrow, but for you guys, it'll be like in the next two weeks. So what we're doing with the first one was actually John's idea of turning this one into a clock. I know, right? Crazy. So we are still on course with 2020. The reason why I loved John's idea of turning this into a clock, a long time ago, my mom bought me a giant round clock. However, it doesn't work anymore. No matter how many batteries I change, no matter what, it like starts to work and then it starts getting behind the times, behind the times, behind the times, and then just stops working. I still have it hanging on the wall. I have a ginormous broken clock hanging on my wall. Every time I go look for a clock that's that size, they're expensive. Expensive. I got my measuring tape out because I wanted to see just how big this grape tray was. And it's 24 inches wide. Right now it's 36 inches long, but I think that I'm going to chop off one or two, maybe making it a perfect square. Nonetheless, let's just look up a 24 inch circle clock. Let's just see a wide variety, of, a wide variety of prices. Let's shop Wayfair. No way, this can't be right. These are expensive. This one's $179, reduced from $247. Now, it does have glass over the top, typical clock stuff, but size for size, this very first one that popped up on Wafer was $179. There's one on sale for $71, originally $124. There's another one for $189. Holy shit. Oh, here's a square one. Oh, okay, it's square, and it looks like it's made out of wood. See it? Oh, it's smaller. It's 18 inch square. So smaller for almost 50 bucks and that's sale price. You can see where I'm going with this. Clocks are expensive. Unless you want to get like a cheapy small clock, maybe that's plastic frame, you're looking at spending anywhere from 50 to well over a hundred dollars. And the good news for us is I got this grape tray for free. This is not one of those situations where you're like, Sherry, I don't have a grape tray. How am I supposed to make this clock? Easy peasy, scrap wood, free scrap wood. Or you can maybe find something similar to a grape tray. Oh my gosh, pallet. You can make this out of pallet wood. You could make a clock out of anything, anything. And to prove that point, I'll show you. A million years ago, my mom made this clock right here out of a piece of slate a cake tin, some bolts, and the clock parts. And if she could make a clock out of a piece of slate that I have had hanging in my backyard for who knows how long, I mean, the hands are completely rusting, it doesn't work anymore, but I really think it's cool looking, we can certainly make a clock out of anything. But today, we're gonna make it out of a vintage grape tray. Very easy peasy. I went over to the Michaels. Don't go to the Home Depot or the Lowe's because they don't sell clock parts like this. They only have actual clocks. This is a clock movement kit. 
So it comes with like the little battery pack and then it also comes with the screws. And they had a bunch of different ones. The hands are what's different. So you can pick really ornate hands, really simple hands. It was regularly $8.99, but I used a coupon. And so I got it for $5.39. So, so far we're into a 24 inch wall clock for five bucks. Then we need numbers for our clock. So at the Michaels as well, because I did look at the Lowe's and I wanted really cute address, you know, like address for your house numbers. The ones at the Lowe's were huge and expensive. Surprisingly, the Michaels had these address numbers for $2.99 and I like them because they're metal, yeah, you know, rusty metal. So I got a six, a nine, a three, and then a one and a two to make the 12. They were priced at $2.99, but again, I had a coupon, so they cost me $1.44 each. $14, we're in it for $14. And it's not gonna cost that much more because I don't plan on putting anything else on it. And it's not gonna take us that much time. Let me just tell you a little something. I've never made a clock before, but you know me, can't be that hard, especially since there's a kit. We're gonna figure this out together. What do you do? Mount this little thing behind here, have this little thing sticking up, put the hands on there, boom, 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 voila, you got a clock. Even with no numbers, you got a clock. Gently press the hour hand onto the shaft at the 12th position, place the minute hand onto the shaft at the 12th position. I mean, I guess when you just put it in here and you set them pointing straight up, then it knows where three, like how do I know <laughs> where the three and the nine go? Obviously the 12 will be right at the top and the six will be right at the bottom. And I guess I just figure that out. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a clock today. So let's figure this shit out. What I was hoping is that where the slats are naturally is where I was going to try to cram because they don't even tell you drill a hole that's whatever size. That's going to be interesting. Oh, there's more directions inside. This doesn't say anything. It just says the equipment's been tested. This tells me nothing. <laughs> okay, don't worry. We've figured a lot of shit out on our own thus far. I am sure we can figure this out. So what I wanted to do was use the natural space in between the slats of the grape tray to put this up through, but that's a no-go. What I wanna do while turning something into something else, you know me, I like to be able to tell what the original thing was. So I don't wanna hack it to shit. So I like the way this end is because it's kind of like broken and whatnot. So if I put this here in this slat, take off these bottom slats, that's cute because this has a broken here. Cut here, let's measure. I know, don't you just love it how I just figure stuff out? Like most DIY YouTube channels, they're like, and today, we're gonna do this and this and this and here it's done here, the supplies you need here, the materials and go. Mm -mm. That's not how we roll. We figure shit out together. It's definitely 24 inches wide. It would be a hair longer than 24 if I took it to here. So I think I am going to hack off these last two and then use these upper four for the clock. So let's get our jigsaw out. We have our trusty jigsaw and now it's gonna be really easy because I'm just gonna go bloom, bloom. I'm not even gonna measure. I'm just gonna line my jigsaw blade up right with the bottom of this and cut it. Okay, one side, other side. And done. <gasps> That's my part, don't break. So now we have our perfect square. Here's the thing I don't like, fresh cut raw wood edges. Maybe we'll kind of sand it and then like rub it in dirt or at least put some brown stain or something on it. Oh my gosh, I just love the look of this. But for now, we're gonna start building our clock. This gap now seems pretty big. Where's my clock thing? Remove the open nut, hex nut and brass washer. This is a hex nut. What the hell's an open nut? Oh, it must be that. Okay, now here's my thing. Look at that. <gasps> you guys, it fits without even drilling. So this is the clock I am replacing that no longer works. Now here's the thing. I like these hands on this clock. I wonder if we can use, I mean the clock's already broke. They just pop right off. There's no second hand, but ooh, I like those. And with my numbers, ooh, let's use those. Let's put a battery in. I don't hear anything happening. Oh, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. It's going. 
Okay, so that's working great. I cannot use the old, that's another thing. If you have a clock that maybe you just don't like anymore and you wanna make a new clock, if the parts still work, you don't have to go out and buy this for five to eight dollars. You can just take apart your old clock and use the mechanism from your old clock. My mechanism is completely busted. So I couldn't get away with recycling that. This might literally be the quickest DIY, considering I don't even have to drill a hole. But if you have a solid piece of wood, you're probably just gonna have to get your drill out real quick, drill a hole so this shoves up in there. Install the mechanism into clock face, slide brass washer over shaft, and I guess we're gonna have to figure out what center is. And screw the hex nut onto the shaft so that it is tight against the clock face. I'm not gonna super tighten it because we gotta measure, we gotta find center, dude. So. Let's get it exactly where we need it to be by finding center here so that we can line up our numbers accordingly. From outside to outside, it's exactly 24. What I'm trying to do is get the mechanism tight against the wood while keeping it centered while also making sure this situation here is straight up and down. Yeah because otherwise it would think that the 12 was like over here instead of right here, right? I need to get little um, pliery things. Needle nose, what have you. These will work. So that same friend, neighbor Dave and Dorothy, she was like, I wanna see a video where you clean out that cabinet. <laughs> Not happening, Dorothy. Let's keep an eye on our measurement. Yeah, okay, that looks good there too. We're probably gonna have to flip it again to make sure that we're staying straight. Right, let's check our straightness from underneath. That looks pretty straight. Oh, I hear it ticking away. I feel like it needs like one more tightness. That's it. Ooh, that's snug. So our clock mechanism is in place. It's time for the hands. So let's get our numbers out. Now there is some black in the number. Black might be the better way to go. I'm gonna go black hands, everybody. These are cute. Maybe for another clock another day. So, no to you. I like the black hands because the numbers have black underneath and it, you can see it. Gently place the hour hand onto the shaft at the 12 position. I do that first, because that's not what it looks like here. The words do not match what the picture looks like. Wait, is the minute hand the long? Minute hand is the long hand. The hour hand is the short hand? Is that true? <laughs> okay, I know. Go ahead, comment. Dummy, dummy, dumb, dumb, dumb. Yes, I know, but it's like, when was the last time that you looked at a clock with the hands, like, not pointing anywhere? <laughs> I almost feel like I have to Google it. It goes short one, and then the minute hand. But wait, the minute hand doesn't fit. The minute hand has a rectangle. What the hell is going on? Oh, okay, it fits like that. This thing has to be a certain way. Golly. Okay, okay both up at the 12 position. So that's straight up. Now tell me, do you wanna be left? Me, okay, then what? Through the open nut onto the shaft and press the second hand. Oh my God, it's the tiniest effing thing ever. And then you put the second hand like so. Is that right? This is like everybody's just barely hanging on. <gasps> the second hand's moving. <gasps> okay, but the hour hand seems not right. Something's not right. Let me figure it out. Okay, I think I have it figured out. The hour hand, I just don't think I had pressed down enough. The second hand's going like a crazy person. So, rotate time set dial for correct time. What the fuck time is it? It's 4.13. So we don't have our numbers on, but let's just see if the hour hand and the minute hand move. Okay, minute hand's going. Hour hand's going! Oh my God, am I a clockmaker? Holy shit, I'm a clockmaker, dude. And therefore, so are you. 413 is probably there, don't you think? <gasps> we just made a clock. All we have to do now is put the numbers on and we're golden. Holy shit, that was really easy. Okay, but there are a couple things we need to do. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay, we are in the home stretch. What we need to do is get our numbers onto this clock so we can actually, you know, kind of vaguely tell the time. I really want to use these black screws, but they're hella long. And I have the tiny baby silver screws, but they're silver. There was a part of me that was like, who the hell cares? So it's sticking through the bag. It's the back, whatever. But no. 
I am gonna use my tiny silver screws. They're super tiny. They are number eight and they are a half an inch. So they're very, very tiny. So I went over in my paint section and I do have some black chalk paint. So I'm actually gonna paint the heads of these so they're not bright ass silver. But what we first need to do is figure out where these numbers need to go. I just love that our freaking hands are moving. And now, oh, this, this happens every time we make something. So think about it. Think about how easy that was, really. I mean, once we figured it out, it really wasn't that hard. I think I was just being dumb. That cost us five bucks. If I didn't have coupon, eight dollars. Clocks are like 50 to a hundred dollars. That took us maybe 30 minutes. I can't get over it. The markup on shit out there is ridiculous. But see how good it is just to make stuff on your own? And no one is gonna have this. This is like one of a fucking kind. People are gonna come into your house and be like, holy shit, where did you get that? That probably cost you a fortune. Oh my God, can you imagine a clock at Pottery Barn? Okay, what are we doing, Sherry? Stay on track, where's my ruler? Let's get these numbers on. So this piece of wood is five and a half. Is this piece of wood five and a half? Yes, okay. So we're gonna go two and a half from the bottom, two and a half from the top, and then that means we'll go two and a half from this edge, and then two and a half from this edge. The measurements from the edges are good. The six is money. Aren't you impressed that I'm measuring shit? Because I'm kind of impressed. I think that looks good, yeah? Let's get the six and the 12 down because we know they're good. I'm gonna do one very gently screw. That way it gives me some flexibility to move if need be. Guess what? We're not using the little baby silver screws. They didn't go into the wood like even halfway. Like I could totally just pick up, I just picked up the six. Saves me some time because now I don't have to paint the heads of these. I went ahead and used my black ones, which are poking through the wood quite a bit. The good news is this lip right here is still further out than my screws are poking through my wood. So six is on and the black screws with the black hands look money. Now let's do the 12. Boom, six and 12, done. All we have to do now is do our three and our nine. So I'm gonna have, if I go up, I'll miss that screw. Oh no. Oh my God, that screw hole's right in the gap. Son of a bitch. Oh my God, that screw hole is exactly in the crack. The dilemma of it all. So in good old measure once, cut twice form, I just naturally assumed, even though now that I'm looking at it, I can clearly see this crack that I thought was in the center is not in the center. This piece of wood is much larger than this piece of wood and this piece of wood. So from the center of the clock down, the bottom is just like 11 and a quarter. From the center of the clock up to the top, we've got over 12 inches. I was thinking to myself, I am calling this the center. I'm not caring about the length of the clock. So I decided to move my 12 down. So my six, five and three quarters from the center here, my 12 will be five and three quarters, so on and so forth. I do have some screw holes that I made, but I feel like if I would putty them and then put some dirt over it, you won't even know. For the dilemma with the nine, kind of split the center, making sure the center of the nine is in line with this and the center of the three is in line with this. As long as everything is five and three quarters from the center, then everything will look perfect in my mind. There will be a bigger gap at the top, but I like that much better. So let me get everything screwed in now, again. Okay, all my numbers are screwed on. I am very, very, very pleased with it now. Let's take a look at the death trap that is the backside. <laughs> look at those screws popping out. But again, none of these screws are past this, so it's not like it's gonna hit my wall. And if I really wanted to, I could trim them off. I'm not that concerned with it. What I am concerned with, I can see the clock mechanism in this gap. 
So I broke off this piece of wood from that. And I'm thinking I want to just shove a little piece of wood. I want to see what it looks like. Chisel off a piece of wood that I can slide in here like so and slide in here like so and see if I like that or if it's just fine how it is and you see the clock mechanism. But for the most, most, most part, our clock is done and it is badass. So I did end up taking that little scrap that I broke off of there and I just took a blade and I kind of until it fit into the gap and I kind of dig it. It's like I still kept it vintage while covering up something but it's still rusticy and it looks like it was already like that and that I didn't do it because I left the edges broken and then there's still kind of gaps in there but you don't see the clock mechanism. I really think I dig it. See, it was like the great tray came that way. So now the only thing I have to do are just some little fine tunings, filling in those little baby holes, filling them with dirt, and then rusticking up the bottom so that at least when it's hanging, you can't see a fresh cut piece of wood. I need to put a hanger on the back so I can actually hang it on the wall. So let's do all of that stuff and then we'll be done. Okay, so this is gonna be easy as all get out. I have doctored up the ends. I just took some of my old stain, rubbed it on there, rubbed it off, looks good. Filled in my little accidental screw holes from the front. I have flipped it over. I'm on the death trap side with the screws poking through here. All we're gonna do is add our little picture framing so we can go hang it on the wall. Now this picture hanging set, oh my goodness, 219 pieces. I'm not exactly sure where I got this, but I have it. I mean, there's gotta be something here that'll work. I think what we're gonna need to do is screw these little eye situations here and here, and then stretch the picture hanging wire, and then that's how we'll hang it. Let's say five inches down from the top. I think I want it on the inside, actually. You should just be able to hand screw this in. Let's get another one over here. Perfect. Now we will take our picture frame hanging wire and then you just kind of like twist tie it like, you know, sandwich bread. Not sandwich bread itself, but you know, the thing on a sandwich bread. I'm gonna pull this really tight actually, wrap it around and twist it. And voila, you are now ready to hang your clock on your wall. Yay us! Let's go hang it. Okay, are you ready to see our magnificent wall clock? Here it comes. Dun, 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 dun. Look at it, and it totally works. Look at that second hand go. It's amazing. And so see here, you can see my little pieces of wood that cover up the clock mechanism. Look at how it looks completely natural in that grape tray. I love it. I think it's amazing. And it fits perfectly on this wall, BT dubs. And then if we go in, you can see, look, under there, it's like I didn't even cut it. Aged to perfection. So here it is, all done, and I couldn't be happier. And for funsies, I went to the Pottery Barn because this definitely looks like something we could get at the Pottery Barn. And so I just searched wooden clocks. They have one. It is a wooden wall clock. It's a little bit larger than this. It's a circle. It looks like this. You want to know how much that is? It's $199. And how much did we make this for? $14. Yep. And dare I say, once again, ours looks better. I just can't get over it. The things that we can do. A free grape tray, and you could find anything. Again, a palette, just scrap wood. Go get a clock mechanism and some numbers, whatever numbers. If you're a good painter or stencil, you could save on numbers and you can paint or stencil. Be like my mom, make a clock out of slate. You got some old tiles laying around, make a clock out of it. It's not hard. It literally took us maybe two and a half, three hours. And that's because I was kind of moving slow. And plus I had to redo my numbers, let's not forget. Point of the story is $14. And we made it ourselves. And it's a total showpiece. And we repurposed something. What could be better? So 
If you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to ring that notification bell so that you are alerted to all of the DIY Wednesday videos I push out every other Wednesday at 5.30 Pacific Standard Time. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.